Okay. Hello, hi everybody. Welcome to the three o'clock agenda, government operations. We're here in room 225. Uh, thank you members for being here. We'll start off with a decision making on the bills that we didn't make recommendations on at our last uh, hearing. Uh, the first one up we had was uh, Senate Bill uh, 299, budget related submissions to the legislature. Uh, what we're gonna do is on this measure is we're gonna effect date it to July 1st, 2112. We're also gonna conform to this act that it take effect uh, no later than December 1st of 2023 in the committee report. The reason why we're doing it is that we want WAM, if they choose to hear the measure, to deliberate further on when the exact date of transfer to the new budgeting system will occur that will allow the departments to comply with the act, which was brought up in the testimony last time around. Any questions or comments? If you're not vice chair, Please do the honors. Okay, on SB 299, the chair's recommendation is to pass with amendments, is that right? Yes, pass with amendments, sir. Pass with amendments. Uh, chair votes aye, vice chair votes aye. Senator Bayamatura. Aye. Senator Kai, excuse. Senator Awa. Aye. Measure passes. Thank you very much, members. Next up, 297. Uh, what we, the issue was raised by uh, Office of Community Services about encumbrances with lands that were acquired due to a GIA grant. Uh, to keep the measure going along, we're going to go ahead and add an effective date of July 1st, 2112. Um, we're going to have it begin prospectively in fiscal year 2024 due to the delay uh, date of the GIAs for this year. And we're going to have Ways and Means pick up the conversation with Office of Community Services over this concern that was raised. Questions or comments? If not, Vice Chair. Okay, on uh, measure SB 297, Chair's recommendation to pass with amendments. If the members present, are there any no votes or reservations? Hearing none, the measure passes. Okay, thank you so much. 232, that one is still providing uh, some quite challenging research. So with your indulgence, we like to defer time certain again on the measure till Tuesday, February 7th at 3 p.m. We're gonna go ahead, uh, Senate Bill 247. Um, while we understand DOT's testimony that change orders can make a project balloon and having a threshold can provide control to that situation by sending them back to the bidding process, we also recognize the concerns of the other departments that starting the process all over again, once it hits a specified threshold, uh, could send these projects back to bidding when it might be in the best interest of the state to proceed with them. So we're going to look at this issue further during the interim to see if there's a better balance system that can be made to address both sides of the issue. And with your indulgence, we're going to defer it indefinitely. Okay. Questions or comments on that? Oh, thank you so much. Uh, Senate Bill 8, we're going to defer this one till the end of the 315 agenda. And when we get to the 315 agenda, you'll, you'll see why. Okay. And I believe that concludes the decision-making portion of the three o'clock agenda. We'll go ahead and adjourn this and we'll convene again at 3.15 for the hearing portion of the next agenda. Aloha, everybody. Welcome back to the Committee on Government Operations from 225, 315 agenda on Thursday, February uh, 2nd. We'll start off with the first bill, which may seem familiar to everybody, um, Senate Bill 306. And first up, we have in person Lieutenant Governor Sylvia Luke. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chair, um, committee member. Um, you know, this bill is very similar to the bill that you heard on Tuesday. Uh, the reason why I wanted to come in person again is I was able to speak to one of the introducers and get clarity. So the, the idea behind this, initially we thought this was just to centralize all the record keeping of admin rules in the LG's office. It's something that was derived from the um, the, the deaf and blind task force. Mm -hmm. um, they, uh, what was discussed was that the legislative website is so much more friendly um, to some of our visually um, impaired or hearing impaired individuals because uh, if you look on any stat, if you look on the alleged website, you're going to see a man like this. Um, mm -hmm. And this is for the um, accessibility. So 
It has coatings for um, if you have dyslexia, if you're visually impaired, and you know it, it provides a lot more access for um, our impaired communities. So I think the intent behind this bill was in addition to combining all the admin rules into a centralized location to make sure that there's text searchable as opposed to um, some departments just posting PDF. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the intent behind it. Um, knowing that is the intent behind the two bills, um, we will, uh, you know, at, at um, your pleasure, you know, we will be asking for additional positions because this will take a little bit more in-depth um, uh, kind of analysis and working with not just DCAB, ETS, but probably with the task force to figure out what, what is the best um, mechanism. So you're going to two positions yeah. now instead of the one? Probably. Okay. Are there going to be any additional support funds? Uh, probably Sorry. because we're going to need some planning funding uh, and then we don't know what the web portal will look, look like. Uh, coming from the legislature, we uh, I see how lucky we are because um, you know the legislature is um, much more um, flexible and um, much more forward thinking when it comes to access and um, um, a public interface. I think a lot of the state systems are antiquated and we're still on the executive side, still trying to catch up on a lot of the web portals. <coughs> so it will need integration of many of the, the web portals and pages. So I think this is a really good effort. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Go ahead, please. Okay, I like this idea. No, I, I like this idea, uh, but just wanted to ask if you could work with ETS yeah. to make sure that as we build this thing up, we're going to hire a local company because what ETS has been doing is just dumping it off to N NIC, I think, is a, is a local entity that builds off the state's websites, but they're based in Houston, if I recall correctly, and there's ample local tech companies that can build out the website that you envision, um, but it seems like in more cases than not, the default for ETS is to go with and I see. So just want to yeah. encourage no, you. No, I think you make a really good point. In fact, uh, for Ready Kiki, we're working with the Data Collaborative and um, uh, a lot of the um, the web portal interface folks who are stationed here, who, who can build web websites here. And unlike in the past, the uh, in the past, the state, it's not just Hawaii, the state governments have looked at building huge, um, you know, like multi-million dollar system. That's no longer the best practice. The best practice is building smaller system where you can tack on new function to be flexible. So, you know, I completely agree. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, that, thank you. this with you and not the speaker's office. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Please show me the speaker more <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Members, any other questions of our esteemed Lieutenant Governor? Okay, seeing none, thank you for being here for your testimony. Uh, next up, we have Senate Bill 387. We first up is Bonnie Kahakui, Acting Administrator for the State Procurement Office. Oh, oh I'm sorry, there's no testimony. Yeah, there's no testimony. Sorry, no, no worries, even I. Good afternoon, Chair. McKelvey, Vice Chair, Gabbard, members of the committee, Bonnie Kahakui, Acting Administrator. And Chief Procurement Officer for the Executive Branch, the State Procurement uh, Office stands in opposition to strongly stands in opposition to this bill, and we're available for comments. Thank you. Thank you for Questions. being here, Bonnie. Appreciate it. Uh, next up, we have Ernie Lau, Board of Water Supply. Oh. Good afternoon, Chair and members of the committee. My name is Kathy Mitchell with the Board of Water Supply. The Board of Water Supply is in strong opposition to. Uh, Senate Bill 387. Okay, thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it. We have late testimony from Deanna Sacco, um, Director of Finance and Chief Procurement Office. Written testimony and opposition. We also have late testimony from Ed Sniffen, Director, DOT, the Deputy, and Lee. Good afternoon, Chair Kelby, Vice Chair Gabbard, and members of the committee. Um, the DOT stands at a written testimony in opposition of this measure, and I'm here for any questions. Thank you for being here. We really appreciate it. 
That's all we've received on 387. Is there anybody else in the audience or in Zoom land who wishes to testify on the measure? Uh, on uh, 387, sorry. We'll, we'll, I'll clarify that. When we, on 387, any questions, members? If not, um, for the audience and everybody, Senate Bill 349, we did not receive any testimony on the measure. However, my bad. Is there anybody in the audience who does wish to testify on it, or is there anybody in Zoom who wishes to testify? Okay, seeing none, in the hearing that we did 387, we'll move on to 509. And next up for 509, sea level rise adaptation. We have Keith Hayashi, Superintendent of Education, the Facilities Development Branch. Testimony in Zoom. Not present, Chair. Not here? Okay. Um, then we will move on. They are in support of the measure. We have Don Chang, chairperson of the DLNR. Go ahead. Go on. Oh, good afternoon, Chair Senators. Michael Kane, um, Office of Conservation and Coastal Lands on behalf of Don Chang and the Department of Land and Natural Resources. Um, we support everything in this bill, but we do need to point out that a lot of this is already contained in um, HRS 225M. Um, and I think I have to look at my notes, sorry. That's and that was great. approved uh, pursuant to uh, Act 178 in 2021. Um, we did include a hyperlink in our testimony to the yearly sea level rise adaptation reports. Uh, that would be climate.hawaii.gov. Um, this year's report was a five-year update, which was 50 pages. I thought about attaching it to the testimony, but I, I spared you. <laughs> and I will be available for questions. Thank you. Thank you for being here. We really appreciate it. Um, next up, we have James Barros, Administrator of the Department of Defense, HEMA, IEMA, sorry, Emergency Management. Uh, they have comments asking for positional support if we can move this forward. Next up, Darren Lerner, uh, director of the Sea Grant College Program. They have written testimony, University of Hawaii, written testimony in strong support. We have late from Justine Nihipali, Office of Planning and Sustainable Development. Good afternoon, Chair and Vice Chair. Um, Sorry for the late testimony. The Office of Planning and Sustainable Development does um, support the intent and wanted to just share some of the comments that reflect some of the activities that the Office of Planning is conducting with other state agencies under Act 178 from the uh, session laws of 2021. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. We appreciate you being here and sharing that with us. Uh, we have late from Ed Sniffen, Director, State Department of Transportation. Thank you, Chair, um, Vice Chair Gabriel, and members of the committee. My apologies, I don't have the testimony, so I, we stand on our written testimony, and I apologize, I don't know what no it's No problem at all. We appreciate you coming okay. to the table. Thank and you. We appreciate your support on the measure. Uh, that's all we have for 509, either uh, written testimony. Oh, yes, please, sir, come on up. Thank you, Chair and members of the committee. My name is Chip Fletcher. I'm listed below Darren Lerner on the University of Hawaii testimony, and I just wanted to say that uh, we'll stand on our testimony. Uh, we're strongly in favor of this, um, and we also uh, make some suggestions to update the wording that's on the existing bill. I really appreciate you being here, Chip. Thank you. Thanks so much for being here. Anybody else who might be in the audience or Zoom land to testify on? Oh. Yeah, uh, Adam? Aloha, uh, members of the committee. Uh, Adam Weintraub, I am with Hyema. I'm standing in for Administrator James Barros. We stand on our written testimony uh, offering comment. Uh, we are in support of the uh, general intent of the bill, but had a couple of comments on implementation uh, available for any questions you may have. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, we noted the uh, comments for positional support if we move it forward. Okay, um, anybody else that I might have missed? See none members, are there any questions? Yes, yes please. Um, Senator. Sorry, Dr. Fletcher. Fletcher. Yes, so, ma'am. 
I'm assuming you're a researcher, and as such, um, DLNR testified that they are already providing this information. And if you look at the portal of climate.hawaii.gov, the information on previous years are there. So what's your response to that? Uh, I need to see, well, I, I need to study it. So you haven't seen the climate.hawaii.gov? I have. I've used it for other purposes. There's a lot of material on there. Okay. But in terms of its specific, how it specifically addresses this bill, I haven't done that analysis, so I can't really answer. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. You're welcome. So um, my quest same question for Haima. Okay. Yeah. Okay. If Haima is there. Hello, Haima. Yes, I'm here. So, uh, Apologies, so, I, I turned off my camera for bandwidth. Um, we so are. Same question. Did you look uh, at climate.hawaii.gov? Uh, I did not. I am familiar with some of the data that goes onto that site. Our comments uh, had to do with aligning the existing data streams. So uh, we are in agreement that uh, if this data is already being collected, uh, aligning everybody who has an interest in it is a very good idea. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. No further questions. Okay, anybody else? Okay, Mike, no? Okay, we're good. Okay, thank you so much. We appreciate you being here, Adam. Next up is Senate Bill 613, first up we have Daintree Bartolis, the State Council on <laughs> Developmental Disabilities. Written in support, Doug Miller, League of Women Voters of Hawaii. Written in support, Lisa Maruyuma, President and CEO of the Hawaii Alliance of Nonprofit Organizations. They too have written in support. We also have several individuals, Cheryl B, PL Fritz, Lynn Matsuao, and Ingrid Peterson all have submitted written testimony in support. Are any of them either here or in Zoom land who'd like to testify? Okay, seeing none members since all the testimony was submitted in writing. I don't think we can ask any questions. So with your indulgence, we will move on to the next bill on the agenda. House, I'm sorry, I'm again, because you're, <laughs> you're sitting here. That's just what does it. <laughs> and because of her. <laughs> uh, Senate Bill 699, Sylvia Lou, Lieutenant Governor. <laughs> Good afternoon, Chair. I don't know what to say about this bill because this bill is not just providing capital tours, it's making sure that we have audio. Um, you know, when you go to um, museums, it has audio mm -hmm. track and then other um, accessibility. Um, that uh, we don't know if that might um, complicate the the tour process only because um, our official language is Olelo Hawaii, um, so we may need to have audio in Olelo Hawaii. And then, if we want to be ex fully accessible, then once you offer audio. Um, support it does it come in different languages and what would that look like um, so there are some questions you know I think um, for this issue uh, traditionally this has been done through the governor's office and it has been a successful program through the governor's office until um, I think the passage of the individual who was doing it um, uh, it is a good idea because I think there's a lot of people who are interested in um, viewing the capital. Um, I think what would be even better is an idea that Chair McKelvey had in the past about having a capital gift shop that is associated with it. And I you know something that will make it a little bit more um, interesting. And um, so it, it is kind of a good idea, but I think this may need a little bit more vetting. Um, uh, just to see what the full spectrum of what we're trying to provide, you know, what, what is the translatable audio and then um, what other systems are there. Thank you. Any questions, members? If not, ab absent of the funding for a capital gift shop. Um, I like souvenirs. I, I'll bring it back again next year. I mean, or whatever this year, if I yeah. talk to our majority yeah. leader sooner. But um, really quickly, but if we were to pass this on for further consideration, you would be seeking the support of two FTEs. Um, yeah, so, uh, so I think instead of, um, for this issue, instead of jumping the gun and providing positions, I think probably uh, interim discussion between um, the legislative branches and 
what this would look like. I think we need to figure out um, what are the capabilities of us um, putting an audio type of tour? Um, is it going to be on all the floors? Is it just going to be in the chamber? I think we do have some bandwidth issues if that's going to be successful. So I think there needs to be some additional interim discussion. I think. Okay, thank you so much. Could we have HTA pay for it? I think um, based on your uh, vibrant and exciting discussions about HTA, I think they would be up for anything at this point. <laughs> <laughs> More and more good ideas as this bill moves on. Okay. <laughs> Anybody else feeling compelled to testify um, in the audience of 699? Anybody out there in Zoom land? If not, uh, we'll move on to Senate Bill 720. First up, Cheryl Park, Office of Information Practices. Good afternoon, Chair, members of the committee. Um, I'm Cheryl Park, Director of Office of Information Practices, and I want to thank you for hearing this bill today that OIP strongly supports. Um, it represents a consensus recommendation of the working group that you asked us to convene, and we worked hard with the group during this past legislative session to come up with this proposal. One thing that's missing from this proposal inadvertently was an ex a amendment for a Sunshine Law exemption for the new working group that we're supposed to convene in five years. But to go through basically what this bill provides, um, we have, by the way, provided you a complete detailed final report back in December. And that's also online on our website. And to um, summarize what this bill would do is that this would create a new UIPA exception that would give government agencies the ability or discretion to dis to withhold from disclosure certain um, deliberative and pre-decisional government internal or in intra-agency records before a final decision is made. But once the final decision is made, everything gets is disclosable, except that we want to continue to encourage full and frank discussion by, by people. And so you can redact from those documents the names of uh, people who are not, did not have decision-making authority or who are not involved in any type of wrong, wrongdoing related to the decision. Um, to make sure that it's not being used as a, you know, uh, that if, if it's taking too long for a final decision to be made, then there is a provision that says three years after a request for a record has been made, there's a rebuttable presumption that the records can be disclosed unless the agency can show that they are continuing to work on the, the problem and they haven't really made a final decision. Um, the definition of the government record has been amended to comport with uh, footnote 15 from the peer news decision, but also to say that um, preliminary, the truly pre preliminary records, the rough drafts that are, uh, have not yet been circulated are not considered government records. So those are not going to be disposable. Rough draft, somebody asked, what does that mean? Just a common dictionary definition, you know, um, preliminary documents with your edits and subject to change. Um, now, this recognizes, too, that there are some decisions that even before the final decision is made, it should be disclosed to the public, like when you're going into a Sunshine Law board meeting mm -hmm. and they have the board, they're supposed to provide the board packets. Well, the board packets should still contain the recommendations that the board is going to be considering at that meeting. Um, it continues to recognize relevant court rulings and OIP precedents when we try to administer this new exception to the extent that it doesn't conflict with the new law. So things like waiver, which we've recognized in the past, those can still be used. Um, and then the, the in five years, uh, what we're supposed to do, it, OIP is supposed to do is from the date of the enactment of this bill, which is suggested as July 1st of this year, we have to start keeping track of how often this exception is being claimed. And then in five years, 
do that new working group and come back to you with a report as to whether or not the exception is working. Um, in actuality, even though it says we're going to do it from January of, I think, 20, 2028, we're not going to get to it until after session is over. So we really only have six months at most to get the report to you in time for uh, the 2029 session. And although we are typically opposed to Sunshine Law exemptions, we understand why this, the working group recommended that it be included in this bill because we couldn't have done the work otherwise. Now we weren't required under the concurrent resolution to be a Sunshine Law board, but we did provide a public hearing and obtain public testimony. And yet many of our um, meetings had to be held in private for us to get through all the legal details and discussions that we had to come up with this proposal. So I hope that you will um, reinsert the language that was inadvertently left out of this bill proposal and um, say that it shall be exempt, the new working group shall be exempt from the Sunshine Law. So I'll be happy to um, okay. answer any questions. Thank you so much. Uh, next up, Louis Salaveria, Department of Budget and Finance. Written in support, we have Thomas Williams, Executive Director of the ERS. They have comments uh, on the proposed measure. Calvert Young, Kari Okinaga, VP for University of Hawaii. We have support from them. Ernest Lau, Manager and Chief Engineer from the Board of Water Supply. Okay, thank you. In support, right? Support? Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, if you're gonna stand on your written, just uh, let everybody know, because we have the online audience if you're in support or opposition or comments. Okay, thank you. Uh, next up, we have Kristen Fern, Executive Director of UHPA, UPA. Written in support, Doug Meller, League of Women Voters of Hawaii. They have comments. Um, Joe Kent, Executive Vice President, Grassroots Institute of Hawaii. They too have comments. We have Gerald Silva, individual with very colorful opposition. <laughs> we have Randy Pereira, Executive Director of HGA, written in support. We also have Late from Lee Nando, Director of DCCA. Good afternoon, Chair, members of the committee. I'm Nidhi Nando, I'm here as the Director of the Department of Commerce and Consumer Affairs. I apologize uh, if we submitted something late, but we submit on our, uh, stand on our written testimony, which provided comments okay. with regard to the law. Thank you so much for your comments, Director. We appreciate you being here too. Uh, that's all we have on 720. Is there anybody in the audience or out in the world of Zoom who wishes to testify? Seeing none, members, are there any questions of the testifiers? Seeing none, we will move on to the final bill on our agenda, I believe, which is Senate Bill 749. First up, we have the Legislative Reference Bureau. Charlotte Carter Yamuchi, Director, uh, written with comments. We have Chief Judge Lisa Ganoza, Chief Judge of the Judiciary. Good afternoon, Chair, members of the committee. Pleasure to be here today uh, as chair of the Commission to Promote and Advance Civic Education. Um, in that capacity, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Senator Kanuha for introducing this, this bill. We are in strong support uh, of this bill, which would provide um, for statutory amendments to the public access room uh, uh, like statutory uh, duties um, to increase engagement and outreach to the schools and to the community as a whole, number one. And number two, to provide, uh, create a position uh, in the public access room for, uh, essentially for that purpose. This, you know, to the PACE Commission, this is something very important because what we find is there are many, many individuals in the state who, who have the heart for civics, who are working hard in the effort for civics to, to have a, uh, however, a dedicated resource in the legislature to reach out to the schools and to the community would really be a step forward. And we really appreciate that the, the, the committee is hearing this and we are in strong support. 
Thank you very much. Thank you so much for being here, uh, Chief Justice, Chief Judge, sorry. Uh, next up, Philip Bosser, Executive Director of Hawaii Association of Independent Schools. They are in support. Uh, Judith Clark, Executive Director of Hawaii Youth Services Network. Aloha, Chair, members of the committee. I'm Judith Clark, Executive Director of Hawaii Youth Services Network, a statewide coalition of youth serving organizations, and we're in strong support of this bill. We know that youth civic engagement leads to reduced risky behavior, increased success in school, and leads to greater civil participation later in life. Civic engagement provides young people with opportunities to gain work experience, acquire new skills, and to learn responsibility and accountability, all while contributing to the good of their communities. Hawaii Youth Services Network coordinates the annual Children and Youth Summit in which youth provide recommendations to legislators about what Hawaii needs to be a better place to live, learn, and work. Youth recommendations from the 2022 Summit have been incorporated into the Keiki Caucus package this year, and we are pleased that our legislators are listening to what young people have to say. I would like to close with quotes from two of the young people who have attended the Children and Youth Summit. This was my first experience in attending a meeting with other youths where our voices matter. I want to make a difference and attending the summit gave me the courage to step out and share everything I've learned with my fellow students. I know I will never stop speaking up for what is right. Alicia Estoy, Jr. at Konawina High School. Another quote, I have always been passionate about the environment, but I never thought that I could make a difference now. Thank you for providing that chance to speak out and give me someone to listen. This has been one of the few times that I felt like people listened to me. McKenna Anderson. Thank you for this opportunity to testify. Thank you so much, Judith, for being here. We appreciate you uh, being here through Zoom to testify. Uh, next up, we have Kat Brady, Coordinator, Community Alliance on Prisons. Aloha, committee. This is Kat Brady testifying on behalf of CAP. We are in strong support of this measure. Civic education is absolutely crucial, and starting with students it is so fabulous. So I thank Judy for the work she's doing, but I just think we need to increase civic engagement in Hawaii and increase our voter turnout. Mahalo Nui. Great. Thank you, Kat, for being here. Uh, we also have Aaron Mendelson, educator, an individual written in support. We have written testimony from Gerald Silva, individual, last of taxpayer money. Um, next up, we have late from Abby Evans individual written in support. That's all we have um, for the, the, this measure in front of us members. Are there any questions of the testifiers? Seeing none, I uh, guess I have a request of the testifiers. Uh, let's see, where are they? Both, uh, I don't know, Kat and Judy, if you're still online and if the judiciary is still here. But do you have a chance to look at the proposed Senate draft one that was offered up by the Legislative Reference Bureau? Um, I need to have the tech people start my video, please. Oh, no, it's it's okay. We're going to do uh, decision making on this uh, time certain for next week. But in the meantime, if you could do the chair a favor and look at the proposed SD1, the Legislative okay. Reference Bureau offered and see, you know, your thoughts and you see if it's good. And if so, then maybe we can adopt it into a recommended uh, version of the bill to move forward. Okay. Okay. We'll do. We'll get back. Thanks, together. guys. I really appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Aloha. Thank you. And I believe that brings us to the end of the show. And with that, we will recess briefly for decision making. Welcome back everybody to the Committee on Government Operations. Um, we had several bills on the agenda. The first up was Senate Bill 306. Actually, first up we had deferred from the previous agenda was Senate Bill 8. 
Um, we're going to take that in conjunction with Senate Bill 306 because what we're going to do is we're going to insert the contents of Senate Bill 8, which is uses the term specifically digital and searchable and also amends the Lieutenant Governor's section of the statute. Um, in addition to the section of the, the statute um, for the admin rules, which is being amended in 306. And then we're also going to go ahead and we're going to put in there the reference made by the Lieutenant Governor to have an accessibility to the deaf and blind community. Uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to make it a recommendation of two FTEs and a blank general appropriation amount. And so ways and means in the committee report can consider those requests when it goes to them. And it's effective date of July 1st, 2112. So SB8 will be deferred because it's moving on in SB 306. Any questions or comments? Not Vice Chair, please. Chair's recommendations to pass SB 306 with amendments. Chairman Kelby? Aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Bonaventura? Aye. Senator Lakai? Yes. Senator Owa? Yes. Measure passes, Chair. Okay, thank you so very much. Senate Bill 349, we were going to defer it indefinitely because it has uh, no testimony. However, in discussing with my committee members, uh, what we're going to do to advance this for a further conversation is we're going to amend the measure to make the government on, uh, committee on government operations confirm all boards and commissions. Oh, oh the listed. <laughs> uh, the that listed. was the listed, sorry, the listed boards and commissions. Yes. Members, are there any questions or comments? If not, Vice Chair. <laughs> okay, uh, recommendation is to pass SB 349 with amendments of the members present. Are there any no votes or reservations? Hearing none, the measure passes. Okay, thank you so much. Next up, we have Senate Bill 613. Uh, we're gonna hear today um, to take a recommendation on. Um, what we're gonna do is because there was only testimony in support with no recommended amendments, we're gonna go as is. Senate Bill 613. I'm sorry, yeah, These are the only ones we're going to take up. The rest we're going to defer time certain until um, next Tuesday. Okay, yes, I guess I do. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Okay, I'll take it piece by piece then. We are going to go ahead and we're going to defer time certain until Tuesday, Senate Bill 387. We're going to go ahead as well because we want to work with the author on the suggested amendments for Senate Bill 509. That too will be deferred time certain until next Tuesday, 3 p.m. Senate Bill 613, all of the testimony received on this measure was in support with no recommended amendments. So the recommendation is that we vote this measure out as is. Members, questions, comments? If not, Vice Chair, please take the vote. Recommendations to pass SB 613 as is. Are the members present? Are there any no votes or uh, uh, reservations? Section of uh, Senator Wad excused. The measure passes. Thank you so much. We were going to make a recommendation on 699 today. However, uh, given the Lieutenant Governor's testimony, we're going to defer time certain until next Tuesday at 3 um, when we can go ahead and discuss a few issues with the, the author. Okay, next up is Senate Bill 720 relating to government records. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and we wanna do a little further research on the working group uh, and their efforts as well as some of the proposed amendments. So we're gonna defer time certain as well to Tuesday, next Tuesday at 3 p.m. in this room. And finally for Senate Bill 749, as we talked about earlier with the testifiers, we're gonna have them look at the proposed SD1 as offered up by Legislative Reference Bureau have them get back to us for a recommendation to be made next Tuesday at 3 p.m. in this room. Uh, that concludes the decision-making on the 315 agenda. Thank you all for being here.